Hi everyone and welcome to my new series all about how to hem jersey knit or stretch fabrics. So I've got a selection of videos that I'm going to be sharing with you over the up and coming weeks and each of the videos is going to focus on a different stitch or technique. Today's video is sort of a broader video talking to you about my five tips, top tips, for sewing jersey hems and how to get a really neat and professional finish on your jersey hems. I'm then going to talk you through a variety of stitches and finishes that you can use when it comes to hemming your jersey, some of which will be on the sewing machine, some on the overlock or serger. So watch today, get some tips, and have a look at the hems that you can do, and then over the coming weeks I'm going to be sharing each of the hemming techniques in greater detail. Let's start by talking about my top five tips when it comes to hemming jersey. The first tip is to use interfacing in the hem. Now you're going to want to use a lightweight knit or stretch interfacing so that it works with your fabric. You can purchase this in strips or you can cut your own strips and you want this to go behind where you're going to be sewing on your garment. Now this is for a number of reasons. The first one is it will make the stitches appear better. If you're doing a blind hem, they will be less visible. But you'll also find that it will help the machine to pull the knit fabrics through. It will almost work as a stabilizer and will prevent you from getting things like tunneling on a twin needle hem. Tunneling is when you sort of have a round of fabric in between the two stitches here. If you don't have a stretch interfacing to hand, another option is something like a wonder tape. Wonder Tape is a double-sided adhesive that actually washes away. It will just help to firm that area of the hem as you are sewing it. The next thing is to make sure you're working with a stretch, ballpoint or jersey needle. Whenever you're hemming your knits, you need to make sure that you're using a needle that works with that fabric. Otherwise, you may find that the needle will actually cut little holes in your knitted fabric. One other tip is if you're getting skipped stitches, with a ballpoint or jersey needle, move to a stretch needle to see if that helps. A walking foot is another really important tool that can help. It will help to feed your fabric through the machine when you're working with something that's a little bit slippy and a little bit stretchy. Finally, if you're still having problems and you've used your interfacing, you've used the correct needle, you've used the correct foot, you could use another form of stabilizer, something like a tear away stabilizer, a wash away stabilizer. You can apply that to the top or the bottom of your fabric as you're working it through the machine, depending on where your problem is. You can even use a spray starch. That can help to firm up your knit fabrics a little bit and to make them a little bit easier to work with. It's also finally a great idea to test on your machine. You're going to want to test the stitch that you want to do and check the settings on your machine. You may need to tweak things like the tension or the foot pressure. If you're interested in learning more about the foot pressure, I have a tutorial here that you can take a look at. Now that you know the tips that you need to consider when hemming your jersey, let's take a look at the different hemming techniques that you can apply. The benefits and perhaps the negatives of each of those potential stitches. And I'm going to link you off to separate tutorials that you can watch here to learn how to do these stitches in greater detail. The first, and probably my favorite, is either what you would call a twin needle hem, or a cover stitch, or a fake cover stitch. Now a fake cover stitch, or a real cover stitch, look very similar. You're going to have a row of twin needle stitching on the outside of the garment. And on the inside, it would look something like this, an overlocker or serge it finished. Now, a cover stitch is really your sort of go-to hemming technique for the majority of jersey items. You can use it on lightweights to heavyweights. And the great thing about a real cover stitch is that it will allow the garment to stretch and bounce back. Now, the downside is that a cover stitch or cover lock has to be completed on a specific machine, or you need to have a good overlocker or serger that allows you to complete a cover lock on that machine. So a lot of you may not have that as an option, which is why I'm going to be showing you how to do what I call a fake cover stitch or a twin needle hem. And that is to have this twin row of stitching on the front. And either just a simple sort of zigzag on the back, this is when I've just used the sewing machine to complete this technique, 
There is one thread, the bobbin on the back, which zigzags. The two threads on the top look like so. Or you can overlock or serge the edge of your fabric first, and it looks a little bit more faux cover stitch. The downside to using the sewing machine for this method is that it doesn't allow the garment to stretch quite as much. You are going to need to be cautious when using this on garments that require a lot of stretch. So perhaps you're making a very snug fitting t-shirt that's going to wrap to the body and you need to be able to get your arms through the opening of the hem of the sleeve. If you were to use this technique and it had to stretch a lot, you would probably find that the stitches would break over time. If you'd like to watch this tutorial, head over to my fake cover stitch tutorial now. I'll pop a link to it here. The next stitch is another stitch that you can do on the sewing machine. And this is what I would call a stretch stitch or a wonky zigzag. So I generally do this using a zigzag setting, but I put my zigzag width to about 0.5 millimeters. And I keep my length at about 2.5. What this does is it creates what I call a wonky straight stitch, so it looks a little bit off, but it allows there to be some stretch in the fabric. Now you are welcome to do any form of zigzag here as well. A two-step or a three-step zigzag would also work. Feel free to check out my video where I share tips and techniques for hemming jersey items on a sewing machine. Moving on, the next option that you could use, and again you could do this just on your sewing machine, is a blind hem. You can do this on your sewing machine or on an overlocker or serger. I personally find that using a sewing machine usually creates a neater or less visible finish. Like you've got here, you can't see the stitches. On the overlocker or serger, it is harder to achieve that. So generally you would do something to make it nice and visible like this. Again, if you were used to use the same thread as a fabric, it wouldn't be as visible as it is here on my sample. It's a great way to get an, some more use out of your overlocker or serger. And by doing this method on the overlocker or serger, it does allow the fabric to retain the stretch. I actually really like using blind hems on my jersey items that I'm making that are a thicker jersey fabric, so something like a double knit or a ponte. They give a really nice clean finish to the hem. Feel free to head over to my blind hem tutorial and I will show you how to do it on the serger, overlocker and the sewing machine. If you like experimenting with your serger or overlocker, another method is to create something called a flat lock hem. Now this uses a two thread stitch on your overlocker or serger and actually creates a really nice detailed finish to the hem. Obviously the stitches are visible, but it again allows the garment to keep the stretch. And I just think it's a little bit different if you want to make a statement from your stitching. Again, I have a tutorial that shows you how to do this on an overlocker or serger. Finally, let's finish with a couple of other hemming options that you could consider. One is to do a rolled hem, like you can see on this edge of the jersey fabric here. This is only really going to work if firstly you've got an overlocker or serger that has a rolled hem function. And secondly, it's going to need to be a nice lightweight jersey fabric. Otherwise, it will probably look a little bit thick and not as attractive. The great thing about jersey is that it doesn't really fray. So you could simply leave a raw edge and you'll find that some jerseys will sort of curl up along the edge and actually this will be a nice little feature for the garment that you're making. Another final option is to actually create a band. And you don't have to just do this to the neck like I've done here. You could do this as a cuff to the end of your sleeves. You could do it to the hem of a garment if you wanted to. And again, I will pop a link to the neck band tutorial so that you can head over and learn how to do this, applying the same rules to what you're working on with your hem. So that is an example of some of the stitches that you could use to hem your jersey items. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson and that you're going to be following along with the series over the coming weeks.